Hello. Hi, how's it going? Good. Let me turn up my volume. Sure. <laughs> How are you today? Doing pretty okay. A, a, a friend of mine has been saying um, doing all right on a curve, which I think is really apropos now, right now because there's so much going on for everyone. 100%. So, right? Yeah. Doing okay on a curve. Yeah. yeah. The, as best as you can. You know, I feel like during quarantine, there's been so many highs and lows and mm -hmm. you just got to kind of have to figure out how to navigate it. Um, That's it exactly. Yeah. But a highlight of quarantine will be talking to you today. I'm super excited about that to uh, chat with you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, so we, I want to dive into kind of what you were like growing up. Was acting oh, wow. something that you were always interested in or did you have to discover your passion for acting? Uh, you know, I have to say acting, storytelling has always been a thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. It's always been something I wanted to do. The question was whether or not I was gonna be able to do it. Um, but even as a kid in Nigeria, um, I, I, I tell this story a lot. You know, I had my elders telling stories mm -hmm. and I just remember being so blown away by what they were able to do, the places they were able to take you. Yeah. Um, and I remember as a child wanting, wanting that and not knowing what it was. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until, you know, that first time that I got up for an audition for Peter Pan and I went, ah, this, this is it. Wow. Now, you know, that was then a long journey to actually getting to do it, mm -hmm. um, to do it for anything more than a hobby. Right. I started out college with, you know, environmental science. Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's been a bit of a journey to get there but as a child i mean i i think i'm one of those people that i knew my passion from a very young age yeah there was no question about it there was no question about what i loved mm -hmm. when did you come to the states when i was 12. oh wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a little while now mm -hmm. um but <laughs> But it was, it was interesting. I mean, that's one of the reasons I love television so much. That, I mean, that was my acclimation. Mm -hmm. That was really my, you know, my main way in. We had a long time, um, a long time uh, before the actual school period started and we had all our paperwork and everything set up. And so it was watching a lot of TV, uh, yeah. watching a lot of growing pains and, you know, things like that. Yeah, I was going to um, ask, what would you watch on TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever was on rerun on, what was it? I think it was TBS at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was just all of everything on rerun. I, yeah. Family Matters, like, yeah, what, mm -hmm. whatever was on there. And, I, you know, I think that's where I learned a lot of my, my high school mannerisms. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what it was mm -hmm. to be American in many ways mm -hmm. was from those shows. Yeah. yeah. When did you uh, move to Los Angeles? Ooh, L.A. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, you're taking me way back. <laughs> um, gosh, I think it's now, yeah, it's 2006. Wow. So yeah, December of 2006. Yeah. So when you moved to L.A., were you thinking... Were you thinking like, oh, I'm moving here to become an actor. Let me get mm. acclimated with the city. Or did you just need like a new beginning? Like was moving to Los Angeles your first step in trying to pursue acting? Um, actually, I did grad school in theater. Okay. Um, yeah. And so I went from there. It was a two-year program. Mm -hmm. And I went from there to Chicago and started doing theater. Oh, wow. Um, okay. so, and I was... In Chicago for about two years seems to be a theme. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> two, two years, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I got to be a part of some really great shows at places like Victory Gardens and um, uh, Steppenwolf, uh, you know, all of these great institutions. But then I, I really had always had a love for film and, mm -hmm. and television. And LA is the place to go for that. So I did that actor's mecca of just throwing everything in the car you know, whatever you couldn't get in the car was yeah. you know, sold on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we did that trip, just drove from Chicago to LA. And it was always the intention was, was to act. Mm -hmm. um, now, along the way, there was a lot of other things I was doing to survive. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the intention always was to mm -hmm. act. 
Yeah, so I had no idea that you came from theater. I always think like the best actors come from theater. So I think that's <laughs> Oh, you're just cool. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I actually think that's true. Do you do you ever see yourself like going back to theater? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's my it's my first love. Yeah. It's it taught me everything. Mm -hmm. Um and it's a, yeah, in a heartbeat of whenever the right project and the timing also right. that works out. Yeah. Um, but oh my goodness, I love theater. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah, I would do it anytime. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a huge theater fan. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about American Gods because this show is huge, you know, like any actor who would get a show like that, like you'd be like, oh my gosh, like freaking mm -hmm. out. How was that presented to you? Um, and then what was like the audition process like to getting oh, that wow. job? I always feel, I always feel bad telling this story, especially when I hear Ricky say it took like five billion auditions. <laughs> um, but you know what? Here's the thing. In hindsight, it was, you know, 500 auditions, but just not all for the same show. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I, you know, I'd been in LA for how long by that point? Been out for everything, done mm -hmm. every student film, every, you know, um, and I also love hearing about those moments where people feel like they missed something that they really wanted. And there was an audition. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the show right now, but mm -hmm. I really wanted it, really, yeah. really wanted it. And uh, I got really great response, but I didn't get it. There was some scheduling stuff that ended up happening. Mm -hmm. But the casting directors remembered me from that. And that is what put me on the short list for American Gods. Oh, wow. And yeah. so then I got to go in and audition for this thing. And um, yeah, it was just, there was just uh, two auditions. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty immediate. Like before I knew it, I was off on a plane um, going off to shoot. Now this is after the how many years, like the iceberg effect, right? Right. Mm -hmm. How many years of going out for things um, and, yeah. like, you know, getting the no's, getting the rejections. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one, it just seemed to happen in a really short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I feel like when it's meant for you, it just, it just kind of clicks and everything works out the way that it's supposed to. And now you're playing the goddess of love <laughs> <laughs> on the screens everywhere. What is your favorite part about the show and your character? I mean, there's so much I've gotten to learn. So much. Vilquis has taught me so many things. And, you know, it's also been interesting because my, my mother has been sharing a lot of uh, folklore as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, there, I'm, I'm really excited to discuss with people going into the third season when, once people have watched it. But there's a lot of stuff um, going into folk folklore that I got to explore even more. Things that I'd kind of heard of. Um, it's also an incredible family. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, any given day with people like Omid Abtahi, more Barnes, you know, um, mm -hmm. you, you've seen me post five billion times how much I love those, <laughs> those people and on and on. Um, but I've really gotten to grow as an actor. And the fact that I was also able to shadow uh, last year or last season, I should say, uh, the directors, that was huge. That then push me into another level of the, the storytelling journey. Right. So there's a lot of favorites. How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I've got all day. <laughs> okay. um, also, I, I've heard that you're kind of like a huge sci-fi fan, um, really into sci-fi. So doing a show like this was also probably another you know, type of fate destiny thing, because it does deal with like Greek mythology and everything like that. So how long have you been into that kind of stuff? Oh, my goodness, that's since childhood. And I think that goes all the way back from hearing those stories in Nigeria, mm -hmm. from folklore, that then got me into Greek mythology, Norse mythology, all of that mm -hmm. got me into science fiction in a, in a minute. 
um, yeah. and and these I was I was reading Asimov, I was reading, you know, um, Bradbury, I was you know, I was reading Stephen King, all of this stuff, um, uh, and actually it wasn't until I came to the states that then I got into Octavia Butler and like all of that work where I'm going, why did no one tell me about this? Right. <laughs> But I've I've just I've I've loved these worlds as far back as I can remember, and there's an element of them because y you know when I read Stephen King, I usually will pause reading that novel when I go back to Nigeria mm -hmm. because there's such an element of it's so palpable in the air the idea of magic and fantasy and mystery, yeah. and so that's why I say okay, Stephen King, love you. <laughs> but we're going to take a pause because it's a little too real to me right now. But I, I think that's what naturally drew mm -hmm. me to all of, you know, all of that. Um, and it, it's, it's been with me since then. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. your favorite um, Stephen King novel or film? Ooh, okay. Well, it's, to me, is what his grand opus, The Dark Tower. Okay. The whole, how many of it is it? Eight of them? Um, Every I single haven't. one, and I believe the first one was written maybe before I was born. And I remember then reading the last one and thinking it was such a journey mm -hmm. um, of, of following all these characters. But I really think um, if you haven't had the chance, first of all, you're going to need a block of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's not something that you're just gonna, you know, finish in a day or two. Right, um, Stephen King is not for the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these are. It's a whole set of books, and they're, mm -hmm. they're it's a pretty large world. Yeah. Um, so that's why I was I was very curious about how they were going to bring that to the screen because it's not something that's going to be done in one two hours. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's my absolute favorite. Yeah. What yeah. about the um, any of his films? Any of the films that have been made? Oh yeah. It's, see, I always find it interesting with Stephen King uh, books into films mm -hmm. because. One of the things that I personally feel he does so great um, in his writing is he gets you to substitute your own worst fears, your own, mm -hmm. he gets you to do yeah. that substitution. And there's, you know, there's almost sometimes nothing more terrifying than what you create. Right. Uh, <laughs> or, For sure. Um, but that said, there's some incredible directors that somehow managed to get in there. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, The Shining is always a, a favorite. Yeah. Um, I, I always joke when we went to House on the Rock to film season two of American Gods, mm -hmm. uh, the place we're staying, there, there was so much of, you know, over, over a hotel to it, the carpets and everything was, it was pretty great. Um, but yeah, that's all, that's always a favorite at the top of the list. Yeah. How about you? Um, I, I haven't seen everything, but I'm a, I'm a big misery fan. Ooh, wow. I love that. you not. I, I love mean. that one. That one's pretty scary. Just <laughs> if you really think about it, like this is horrifying. Well, the um, performances, the performances, so good. Just, yeah, I mean, she took it to a whole other level. But and there's uh, something funny about it too. Like when you watch certain scenes in Misery, some of it is like kind of funny. So <laughs> I love that one. Anytime it's on, I could probably watch it. <laughs> um. What I know you don't want, you can't spoil anything or give anything away, but what is like what are can you say anything maybe about where you see the future of um your character in American Gods? Ooh, what can I say? What can I say? Okay. Uh one thing I can say, this is where I start. <laughs> I'm going, okay, where is there an NBA spot here? Um so I mean a lot of the First season, I was, you know, I spoke a lot about Bilkless um, working to survive. Mm -hmm. Second season, she's working towards, you know, thriving. Mm -hmm. And I'd say third season is where she's really finding her drive. Okay. And, um, and you know, everything, it's, it's going to be a whole journey that we'll all get to go through together when everything's cut together and mm -hmm. we'll see, you know, in the edit. Yeah. Um, but there was so much more agency to play with. Um, and I think you will, 
I think people will be in for the ride. I think you're going to get a whole lot more Bill Quiz. Okay. Yes. I feel, I feel like that's what the people want. Um, you know, that I'll be, I'll be like, read like watching clips on youtube or something and it'll just yeah. be in the comments like we need more we need more so i feel like that's what the people are waiting for and i'm sure you can't even talk about this but there i feel like there's this huge campaign for you to be storm in the in the uh, mcu anything yeah. anything brewing I mean, <laughs> everyone knows that it's a dream it's mm -hmm. um that was one of the things that i would watch saturday morning cartoons yeah um, the x-men a uh, storm and then recently having more time to dive in with you know marvel unlimited uh, where you can read all the comics online no i didn't um, know that that's have, very like, cool lists for different characters and so being able to dive back into that and mm -hmm. you know going back into a lot of um storm origin story and also i mean i just i love the idea that they play with the with the claustrophobia and and being a black woman, that's just so, there's right. so much juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, but that, no, that's no, just yeah, me. I agree. Yeah. Just there's a level out. of storm that we haven't seen yet. And yeah. I, I just hope that they pick a person that can do that story justice for sure. Well, it's just, there's so, I mean, we've had incredible people along mm -hmm. the way. We've been so lucky. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I do have to say, I don't, feel that Storm, the character, has been given enough of a stage. Um, yes. This is a woman that in, in, in has been worshipped as a goddess. This mm -hmm. is a, a woman that's, you know, an Omega level mutant. This is, uh, this is this incredible largesse of human being, or no, mutant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But just largesse of that and I can understand her then being so concerned with claustrophobia because it feels like even this is happening in how she's portrayed but she's been compacted into a space that mm -hmm. does not take into account all that she is right um and so I'm really excited to see when that's when we get to really dive into the depths of, mm -hmm. of the character and uh it's no secret. I would love to be a part of making that happen. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed for you. We'll put a <laughs> petition together. <laughs> um, but I do know that you're actually, um, I heard that you actually um, funded your own project, your short film in Hollywood land, which is um, kind of inspired about Alice in Wonderland, which I think is so cool. Um, is that out yet for people to see? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, so it was crowdfunded. It was uh, That's such awesome. an incredible, uh, there was so much support behind it. Still mm -hmm. is, I'm seeing all the love. Um, and uh, this is a project that I wrote and produced along with Karen David, who produced and was also in it, and Jessica Sharif who directed mm -hmm. uh, and also produced. Yes. And it was just, it was incred an incredible journey to go along with these, these creatives, um, mm -hmm. you know, three women producers um, mm -hmm. and talking a lot about the, the intersections and, and things that we deal with. Um, and so we did get to premiere at Bentonville, Bentonville Film Festival Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then it, immediately after, we were at the American Black Film Festival. Lovely. Um, yes. And uh, we actually, I think we can announce, I think we're allowed to say, but we'll be at the Catalina Film Festival. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <especially. laughs> yes. So we have more coming in. And mm -hmm. um, because we're having these wonderful virtual right. um, festivals, um, there are many ways for people to see it. Uh, the American Black Film Festival, the community pass was free. And so mm -hmm. everyone that got one of those was able to see it. Um, and so once we're done with the festival circuit, then we'll be able to release it. In, okay. In, yeah, in other spaces. Okay. So if you guys can't get into the festival, just keep your eyes peeled. You'll be able to You'll be able to see the film very, very soon. Yes. That's so awesome very though. Soon. Congratulations. I love Thank the girl you. power. Girl Power Group <laughs> taking it's, over Hollywood. 
Yeah, it was, been, it was pretty amazing. And, you know, our cinematographer was also a woman. You know, mm -hmm. we had a, a large percentage of our crew were women. And then we had a lot more people that had been historically oppressed than, um, than not. So it was, it was an interesting environment. And we really were trying to reach a hand out to everyone and, and to create the kind of world that we hope to see. Um, and so this was our you know, our first step into trying to do that. I love that. Absolutely. Congratulations. And Thank that's you. so amazing. Can't wait. I'm, I'm going to try to go to go to one of these film festivals, film festivals virtually so I can check it out. I mean, let me know. So. I will. <laughs> I will. I love the concept. So I'm excited to see what it's about. So before I let you go, I just want to play a quick rapid fire. You don't have to answer super quick or anything, but I just want to ask you a couple of questions, a couple of fun yeah. questions. Just I'm for laughing the people. already because <laughs> people already know about me in rapid fire. You ask me my name in a rapid fire quiz and I will take five minutes to try and figure it out. Um, so yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. It'll be totally fine. Um, okay. What is the biggest misconception about you? Ooh, that I am not a total nerd. <laughs> I think everyone that meets me uh, within five to 10 minutes, I mean, we're going to be talking Star Trek, which by the way, happy Star Trek day, uh, or we're gonna be <laughs> talking about, you know, something to do with science fiction or fantasy. Mm -hmm. So whenever someone doesn't assume I'm a geek, I always say that's the biggest misconception ever. Okay. What's your favorite color? Red. Red. Oh, are you wearing red? I am actually. I'm having a red shirt, My red lips. I'm a, right. I'm a red fan. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, who oh, yeah, is somebody? <laughs> who is somebody that you would love to work with? Meryl Streep, Viola Davis, Lupita Nyong'o. I'm oh, sorry, I'm doing a whole list. No, now. that's. <laughs> I agree with every one of those statements. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a long list. A long yeah. list. Yeah. Um, what is the last TV show that you binged? Oh, the last, well, I waited for a couple of episodes before, so I think it's four now, before Lovecraft Country. Yes, I haven't and watched so it yet because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, so I can just go through it versus watching it week by week, but... I was I, trying to wait, but I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, it was killing me. And so mm -hmm. now I'm caught up and waiting on the next one. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And um, my last question for all of the actors out there, what is a piece of advice that you could give them? Piece of advice. I mean, you know, everyone's going on their own journey. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's one thing that I've, I've learned over all these years, but everyone is going on their own journey. And we, we touched a little bit about the iceberg effect of it all. Mm -hmm. The many years, the many auditions, the many bits of work that most people don't see, um, but it is all adding up to something. Mm -hmm. And so I just always want every actor to know that it is adding up to something. You're getting there. It's just at the moment, you might not be able to see it, but you're getting there. So trust in that and trust in yourself. I love that. And I thought of one last question. I know that I said that was the last one. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. If you could recommend one sci-fi TV show or movie for a non-sci-fi fan, what would it be? Ooh. Ooh, I mean, okay. Everyone knows my first love was Star Trek Next Generation. Star was Trek. my in into the Star Trek world. Okay. But, I mean, I, there's only one because there's so many. There's, oh, okay. That's definitely a start. Okay. But I would say also Battlestar Galactica. Um, okay. With Edward James Olmos and oh, that whole crew, Katie Sackhoff, all of them. I would say it's... To me, it felt like the precursor of genre TV as we know it. Okay. Um, the kind of genre TV that gets Emmys and gets mm -hmm. noticed for awards. I think if Battlestar Galactica existed now, it would be getting all those awards. But the ones that have 
all have that to thank for it. It is just some of the best scripted drama. Uh, yes, it happens to be in space, um, but the interpersonal relationships, the characters, it's just, it's incredible storytelling. Okay. I'm going to write that one down so I can get <laughs> it out. Do it. Do it. And I, I want to hear your, uh, I always love hearing people's feedback after they finally give in and watch it. I mean, I've told so many non-sci-fi geeks to check it out. And when they finally do and they get to the, you know, they, yeah, they have a lot to say. <laughs> okay. I'll definitely message you and let you know for sure. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for chatting with me today. Oh, this no, is great. Of course. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for so much. Me. And tell me, uh, tell everyone where they can find you at. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Yatide. That's Y-E-T-I-D-E. -E. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at Yatide Badaki. All that's, right. That's and if you guys haven't already, make sure you check out American Gods. Uh, season three, do we have any dates or anything yet or just coming soon? Nothing I can share. Okay. But coming soon. More soon. information is coming up <laughs> very soon. I think very I'm soon. that. We will hear more information about it very, very soon. We all can't wait. So make sure you guys stay tuned. And if you haven't caught up, just catch up. You have nothing better to do. We are in quarantine. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you. Have a great one. <laughs> Thank you, too. Bye. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said was mine. Where is the buzz? <laughs>